I've graduated. Et super te. I am now Thomas Rintoul M. Fizz Ons. And that means, yeah, no news titles on this one. But I felt like this indeed marked that I needed to go into what's coming next and commemorate somewhat the graduation. I went into detail in my last video explaining about St Andrews, reviewing my whole time there, my degree, the social side and all that, but I'm not there anymore. I moved out a couple of weeks ago and at time of recording I am in Sweden with my partner. Obviously I'm not there now, I'm in my mom's house, I'm in my bedroom, but you get the point. What's next? I'm going to get the headline right out of the way so that if you're just here for that you can leave. Please stay around for the rest of the video, but you know. From October I will be starting a PhD in astrophysics at Cardiff University. My project title, at least initially, will be simulating massive galaxies and their circumgalactic medium, supervised by Dr. Freke van der Voort. There you go, that's the headline. It's part of the AIMLAC CDT, which I will come on to later in the video, and it means that I've got three and a half years funded as a PhD student, as well as a six month industry placement that's also funded for a total of four years overall. Now me embarking on a PhD probably doesn't come as too much of a surprise to people who've been following the channel for a while. You'll know that I've wanted to do this for a very long time, but we now have official confirmation that I'm actually going to be doing it. I mean, we've known for a while and I really haven't kept it that much of a secret. People on Twitch are very much known about it. But I felt like I'd maybe uh, have a bit of a chat about how we got there, why Cardiff? And yeah, what was the process like? Why did I decide to do a PhD in the first place? I mean, I've wanted to do a PhD for about 10 years now. That's when I first had the idea. So this was around my third or fourth year in high school. I'd been disillusioned with the idea of doing an English degree. I'm a very good physics teacher at National 5 level and later at higher had told me that astrophysics degrees are a thing. It was also around the same time that I saw the Stephen Hawking biopic, The Theory of Everything. I'm not saying that The Theory of Everything is the reason I'm doing a PhD. That movie was more instrumental in, in making me realise that doing a PhD was a thing that people do and that you can go into academia after it and that that is a job. That movie and having a really good physics teacher that told me about this and encouraged me happened around the same time, which was really important. But at that point, it was just a thought, an idea. How did I actually get to the point to deciding, yes, I'm going to apply for PhD places and I'm going to pursue this? Well, that came at St Andrews. So I'd applied to St Andrews with the intention of, you know, doing an integrated master's degree because I thought, well, that's the stepping stone to PhD. I put myself on that track already. I was lucky enough between my third and fourth years to go and do a summer project simulating supernova explosions. I really enjoyed it and we had a few other research and research-ish project things throughout the degree that I, I really liked doing. I liked this whole trying to answer new questions and reading critically around papers and all this stuff. So yeah, this convinced me to apply, this convinced me it was a good idea. So let's talk about the process of getting me to this point where I have a confirmed offer with Cardiff Uni to go and do a PhD there. I applied to six PhD programmes at five different universities. St Andrews, Edinburgh, Oxford, Cambridge and two programmes at Cardiff. Something that I found when I was applying to these programmes is that I'm actually not that attached to any one area of astrophysics, any particular research field. What I'm attached to is the process of doing simulations, exploring evolving systems, turning physics into code and extracting information from the data. That's what I really like, which is why I was then applying to star formation stuff and galaxy simulation stuff. But applications are one thing. Interviews and offers are another. Let's work my way through. First off, Edinburgh. Simple one. They just completely ignored me. I don't really know why. I don't know if they just didn't get my email. Um, Edinburgh's application was weird. Everywhere else gave me an offer of an interview. So I had quite a few trains to take. At the end of February, I jumped on a train to Cambridge and it, yeah, I was pretty nervous for the first one. I think that came across and I don't know if I represented myself as well as I could have. But anyway, I really liked the department in Cambridge. It was certainly up there. It, it felt very similar to the department in St Andrews in terms of its feel, in terms of its vibe. It was just far fewer undergrads. The next day I went to the Oxford Physics Department for my interview for their DPhil, because they call it that rather than a PhD. It was so much more formal. The interview process was far more structured than any other one that I did. They gave us papers to prepare. So they had a theory paper, which was a cosmology theory paper, something I don't really understand that well. There's a lot of general relativity and stuff in there. 
And then they also had an observational paper looking at galaxy stuff from JWST. Neither of these are my area of expertise. I am a computational astrophysicist. That is what I do. I don't do in-depth general relativity theory and I don't do observations. So I was having to try and figure out these papers on the train down because, yeah, they're not my field by any stretch of the imagination. The whole department just felt a little bit more reserved. I don't know. It just, it just didn't quite feel right. The city and the uni department, I don't know, it just didn't quite work for me. The third interview was a lot closer to home in St Andrews. I knew the entire interview panel. There were three of them and all three had been my lecturer at some point during my degree. The interview felt easier than the first two, possibly because I knew them better, possibly because I was getting better at this and we had a bit more of an informal discussion. I don't have much more to say about it. It was, it was fine. A little later, I had another trip south, this time to Cardiff for my first of two interviews with their department. And it seemed to go pretty well. I felt like I'd represented myself better to Cardiff the first time than to any of the three prior. I, I certainly hit more of their sort of aims, like looking at sort of outreach stuff, and that seemed to go better. But yeah, again, it, I think I was kind of hamstrung by the fact my research wasn't done and I was a little bit nervous. The good things that came out of this though was I had a chat with a potential supervisor, it hasn't ended up being the one I've got, but I had a chat with him and with some PhD students. So I got a bit of an idea of what the department was like, it seemed really good, seemed quite open, fairly similar to St Andrews actually in terms of its feel. I had plenty of time in the city over the rest of the day to go and explore and I really liked it. I get what people say when they say Cardiff is a gem of a city, it just seemed really friendly, really nice. I didn't get offers from any of these first four interviews. This was a little bit disheartening but they all gave feedback that kind of amounted to you're a good candidate but we just don't have enough funding to fund everybody that we want to. But I'm going to Cardiff, so clearly something went right. The first interview was for a position funded by the Science and Technologies Facilities Council, one of the UK research councils. The second interview was for a CDT or Centre for Doctoral Training called AIMLAC, which stands for Artificial Intelligence, Machine Learning and Advanced Computing. I got this interview through much later than the rest of them, closer to the end of my project. Since I'd already been down to Cardiff for the first interview, I decided to do this one on Zoom. This interview went a lot better. I was able to talk more in full about my entire project because I actually had results I could talk about and the process and the analysis and that was all great. And because I'd had that first interview with Cardiff, I had a bit more of an idea of what it would be they were looking for. I could touch more on the stuff that they'd want to know. So I certainly asked a lot more about outreach and getting involved in that, in tutoring, in the training available, in how the CDT would work practically with going to other universities and such. And I think I did a much better job at representing myself. The other advantage I think I had was that my background from my master's project is very computational. It's simulations and I was applying to simulation projects. So that makes sense that they'd fund that through the AIMLAC CDT rather than say through the STFC funding pot, which can also go to say observers. A couple of weeks later, the offer came through to do simulations of galaxies. I'd spoken to the supervisor around the same time as the interview and really got on with her. We were on the Zoom call for like an hour and it was just really easy. So I happily accepted that offer when it came through. And now that I've graduated with first class honours, I have met the condition of minimum to one honours. So yeah. I'm moving to Wales. But I'm sure that as much as I've done a lot of explaining, I haven't really answered all of the questions you're likely to have, so please drop them in the comment section below. I'm going to try and answer some likely questions now. The first of them will be, what am I doing? So the project that I'm going to be doing, the initial title, is Simulating Massive Galaxies and Their Circumgalactic Medium. What this means is I'm going to be running cosmological galaxy simulations to explore the effect of the circumgalactic medium on galaxies and how they evolve. I realise that's a lot of technical jargon. Bargain. So what this means is I'm going to be using a supercomputer to simulate galaxies in a realistic simulated universe. So I'm not going to have a galaxy in a box, I'm going to have a galaxy that exists within a wider universe so the rest of the universe can impact this galaxy. Galaxies have a lot of stuff around them that's known as the circumgalactic medium. My PhD is going to focus on how that circumgalactic medium affects the evolution of the galaxy it surrounds. Next up, was Cardiff my first choice or am I just going there because of the only ones that gave me an offer? Fundamentally, I am an indecisive person when it comes to big decisions. I couldn't decide on a first choice. I was between St Andrews and Cardiff because of like 
diametrically opposing things. St Andrews was familiar, whereas Cardiff was the shiny new thing and I couldn't decide which one I wanted. So frankly, the universities making that decision for me made my life a lot easier. That being said, and I touched on this a little bit in my last video reviewing St Andrews, I was finding that actually by coming to the end of my degree that I was feeling more and more that I was ready to move on from St Andrews to go somewhere else because I think if I stayed with most people that I knew leaving I'd end up I don't know maybe reminiscing too much about my undergrad time or it feeling like I was getting stuck somewhere and the sort of I don't know it just I felt like I was ready to leave and I think that's a good thing. So with that perspective now, I'm really glad that I got the offer for the Cardiff PhD and that I've accepted it. I think I probably would have come around to deciding to go to Cardiff anyway, but I'm not sure. What is a CDT? What is AMLAC? A CDT or a Centre for Doctoral Training is a type of PhD that has become more and more common and more and more popular in the UK in recent years and possibly elsewhere, I'm not sure. The difference is that there is additional support, there's additional away days, training, extra stuff like that, workshops, think tanks. You don't get that same sort of thing built in with an STFC funded PhD. My CDT, AIMLAC, is an interdisciplinary CDT. It's interdisciplinary, meaning that it brings in people from all sorts of fields. So there's people from astronomy, particle physics, biology, health, maths, computer science, all doing different things that use these technologies, use these techniques, AI, machine learning, and advanced computing. There'll be away days and conferences and stuff like that to be able to exchange ideas and talk about how we're doing our work. But the idea that we can utilize stuff from other fields to improve our own research. This CDT is not just attached to Cardiff Uni. Members of the CDT come from Cardiff Uni, Swansea, Aberystwyth, Bangor, I may be saying that one wrong, and Bristol. So it's five different universities across many different fields. So it's far more collaborative, far more interdisciplinary, far further reaching than some CDTs happen to be. The other big difference between a normal PhD and mine through this CDT is that I will have a six month industry placement between my second and third years. This means that I will spend six months with a company doing something related to AI, machine learning and advanced computing. And these companies range from things you've never heard of to really big companies like Microsoft, IBM, Dell, Intel, Nvidia. So these are really big companies that are involved with the CDT and the idea is that you go and do this industry placement, you learn a load of stuff and you bring that knowledge back to improve your research when you return to your PhD. And finally, what does this mean for you, the viewers on this channel? What this means is that any academic content that comes out on this channel will no longer be focusing on undergraduate me, but rather on postgraduate me. I want to bring you guys with me on this journey to show you what doing an astrophysics PhD is like, specifically doing a simulations PhD. And if that sounds good for you, then please make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss those videos. I'm thinking some vlogs, I'm thinking some discussion pieces. Get subscribed, hit the bell icon, you don't want to miss that. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching this video all the way to the end, and if you want something else to watch, there'll be something on the screen. I'll see you in the next one. See ya!